Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episode 4 of Chucky. So, last time we left off, we had a bit of a cliffhanger, and yeah, I'm really hoping she's not dead, because there's just so much perspective, character, and depth they could continue to give to her. Um, but yeah, that party kind of went very sideways. And I, I, I assume most of the kids got out, even though they weren't even realizing. Though, again, as I said last time, it's kind of weird that they didn't. Like, okay, not hearing it, fine. They had the headphones on and everything. They were jamming. But again, like, if you've ever been around just fire in general, like, you can feel it from a good amount of space away. Just from, again, experiences I've had being around either bonfires or even an actual house fire once it's like you can feel it without even actually being that near it fire is hot obviously and it's like it, that heat permeates through the air in the surrounding area so we saw that explosion burst out on the upper floor it's like, yeah, th those kids on the lower floor, they were right next to basically the stairs. They were basically right underneath where that explosion happened. It's like, they would feel that. So it it's weird that they didn't react to it at all. Like, not hearing and realizing the one guy was up there being killed by Chucky, it's like, that that's one thing. Again, not hearing the fire and everything, okay, fine, I can I can give it that. But again, it's like they would feel that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and I'm wondering, how is the mom, the cop, going to try and pin this on our main character? Because she's been doing all of that. She's been blaming him or at least seeing him as the main suspect for everything considering everything going on, even though she has very little actual evidence of such and is just kind of assuming shit, let's be honest. Um, and she's using the entire, like, it, I mean, it's not quite the same, but it's, it's kind of like a proximity fallacy. I, I don't know if there's a specific name for a fallacy like that, but um, it, it's basically the idea that because he's within the proximity of these murders or any or has the tiniest bit of connection to them, she sees that as actual evidence that he is, again, either guilty or at least connected to it. And mind you, he is he is connected in one way because of Chucky, but she doesn't know about that. She doesn't know Chucky is alive and possessed by the spirit of a serial killer. So she has no reason from her perspective to actually suspect him. Like, you could possibly say there could be something there for his father. But everything else is completely disconnected. The housekeeper for his aunt and uncle, it's like, he, he didn't know her. He had no reason. He would have no reason, no motivation, no anything to back up that kind of action there. And there, there, it just wouldn't make sense. It would not work. And then the woman who had the razor in the apple, why, where would any sort of connection be there? Now this kind of this certain situation, of course, you have the girl and everything, and yeah, there is you could see reasoning there, but there's like 
a lot of witnesses that can tell you he would not have been there. That that wouldn't hold up at all. Now, granted, we as viewers know the truth. We know it, it, it. To a small degree, he is kind of partially at fault here. Because he did give her Chucky for her sister. And that is kind of what caused all of this. And he did it because he couldn't bring himself to do anything personally but still was angry and wanted revenge thanks to Chucky's pushing on that um, for what she did uh, on Halloween, dressing up as his father in the process of being electrocuted. So, yeah. And even though his father was, you know, an abusive shitbag, a homophobic abusive shitbag, it's like that's still fucked up no matter what. Like, he was still traumatized by that no matter what. And so it's like, doing something like that is still really fucked up, no matter how you look at it. So, you could kind of say that he does have some fault in this, even though, again, he didn't actually do anything himself. And to be fair, I don't think really anything that he did do could be rightly used against him. Just because, again, killer doll and all, it's kind of new territory in that regard. <laughs> so yeah, don't really think that would be able to go anywhere. Though, you know, this lady, she's a cop, so you know she's going to try because, you know, cop. Um... But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, this is halfway through the season with this episode. Because um, there's eight episodes total. And I'm wondering, like, how are we going to change the status quo to keep this going? Because that's clearly going to need to happen. Right? Like, this first half of the, of the season, minus this episode, because we haven't seen this one yet, has been basically Chucky starting his his murders. Chucky like introducing us to our characters, Chucky kind of getting introduced to everything in this town and everyone and the murders starting to happen and how it's affecting our characters. It's it, it's definitely a build up. So the question is where is this episode going to take it, and how is that going to lead into the second half? What is the second half of this season going to morph into? Because in order, it, it can't just be the same stuff. It has to change to some degree, whether that be in a major way or even just in a few different small ways. Um, but it's definitely got to change its overall just track in order to keep that attention and just keep it from feeling too repetitive. I mean, obviously there's still going to be murders and everything, but there, there's got to be some change to the status quo that makes things feel fresh with all of that. Um, my biggest thing is, my biggest idea at least, is that Chucky and our main character are going to become separated. Like, there's going to be a complete schism between them. And we're not going to have, like, Chucky trying to convince him to kind of become a killer himself anymore. Um, instead, it's going to be, like, uh, two warring factions. Now, that could mean a number of things, too. That could mean Chucky could end up getting others on his side somehow. And that could also mean that our main character could. But there's a lot of a lot of things that you have to question in regards to that as well. So it's like, we're, we're just going to kind of have to see how that all pans out. If it does, if that is even how it goes. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Admittedly, I don't know. And it'd be interesting to see like who would team up with Chucky. 
because there's a few characters in here who I could definitely see doing so. So it's like, I'm curious as to what's going to happen with that. And I'm just excited for the future. This series, uh, with only the first three episodes at least, has been really great. It's definitely kept the spirit of the Child's Play films. And um, I I'm really enjoying it. The, there's some legitimate humor in it at times, but there's also some good scares. Really good character writing. Just great pacing. All of that. Um, now, I did look something up pro uh, between episodes three and now. Bef uh, between recording the last episode and this one. I looked up the movies because I wanted to check to see exactly where I got. Because I was not sure. I think I mentioned like something along the lines of that in the in, in the first episode, but I, I was not entirely sure how many of the movies I had seen. And so l let me actually get that up again here real quick. So, okay, I should probably get these in order and everything. Okay, so there are seven films, not including the remake from 2019, that was shit. Um, even though Mark Hamill did a fine job, I mean, as good as Mark Hamill always does, but just in general, there are too many bad changes. <laughs> but there were seven films, uh, so I have seen the first six. Looking through them uh, when I did and looking through like the general synopsis of all of them, I have definitely seen the first six, which is the original Child's Play up to Curse of Chucky. I have not seen Cult of Chucky. Um, so I, I have heard that it does affect this series. Um, but I think I'm going to probably end up checking it out either on my own time or just seeing some kind of recap video or something for it. Um, one or the other. It's, it's, it's not going to be something I react to because I'm already in the series at this point. I'm not going to try to force the, the movie reaction in there uh, just randomly when I don't have time and everything. So I'm, I'm just going to probably either read a full description of the events of the film or watch a recap video or something like that or watch it on my own time if I can find the time. Um, but yeah, I, I've seen all of the first six movies up to that. I've seen the reboot. It's just that one I kind of missed out on um, for whatever reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll probably check that out again either through a recap or on my own time or whatnot fairly soon so probably before the next episode reaction comes out before i even record it um so yeah um so yeah i i don't know again i don't know how it's going to connect i don't know what the specifics of it are i just I was let know that Cult of Chucky does connect to this series somehow. So, yeah. Want to let you guys know about that as well. Um, but, in the meantime, uh, we're just going to get this started, hope for the best, and see what uh, this halfway point episode of the series, of the season at least, uh, gives us. And definitely coming off of the last one, what kind of uh, payoffs to that cliffhanger it gives us. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So another really good episode. Um, 
And that went by quick. I, I don't know about you guys when watching this or watching my reaction or anything, but that went by really quick for me. Um, and that's usually a sign that I'm really into it. Um, obviously the entire adage, time flies when you're having fun. Um, and, and that does apply to a lot of, uh, media as well. If you're really enjoying doing something, playing a game, watching a show or movie or, or whatnot, it can feel like time is just going by quicker and you don't even realize it can be over before you know it. Um, so it's like, by the fact that this did seem to go by so quickly, it's like, oh, okay. So this was an interesting episode for a number of reasons. We're, it seems we are kind of going in a direction that I had uh, guessed at in the pre-thoughts. I, I was saying like a way to shake this up going into the second half would be to have Jake and Chucky split and, and form kind of in a way two factions um, to face off against each other. And that definitely seems to be where they're going with this. Um, Chucky is kind of doing his own thing, but in the meantime, we have Jake kind of forming this squad with Lexi and Devin. And it's like, okay, I, I think this is a good squad. I wonder if we're going to get Junior in on it too. Um, that would make sense to me. Um, but yeah, now Devin and Lexi both know about Chucky, uh, cause Lexi obviously found that out last episode when he tried to kill her. Still unclear on how she got out of that. I, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be too unbelievably difficult. I mean, he is a doll, let's be honest. But I'm just wondering exactly how it happened, you know? Um, but yeah, and, and Devin kind of found out about at least the urban legend behind it initially um, from doing research and everything. And what he was going to tell Jake, but then he ended up talking with uh, Lexi about it and at the end, they are finally actually saw Chucky moving and, you know, flipping them the bird. Um, so I think he believes for sure now. Um, so we got our squad who are going to face off against Chucky, who, yeah, is completely against Jake at this point, especially after Jake refused to kill Lexi in the burned remains of her home. Uh, he had the opportunity, as Chucky said, to just let her fall, and obviously Chucky would do anything that would have remained necessary. And he, he chose not to, even though right before that, the, the thing that caused her to fall in the first place was him finally snapping at her and telling her, like, you deserved to die. I, I wanted to kill you. I wanted you to die because you deserved it, because of what you did. But even despite that anger, despite those feelings, he chose not to be a killer. And I, I, I've talked about this before. I don't know if it was in Chucky or if it was something else. Uh, I think I talked about it semi-recently, though. But everybody kind of has those feelings every now and again. Where someone is just so terrible or outright evil in the world where it's like, you just would not mind if they died. In fact, you actually think it would be better if they did. There, there, there are definitely feelings like that that everyone goes through. Whether it be just the intense anger you feel uh, at someone bullying you or just a terrible person in the world or so on and so forth. Everybody feels that, but it's basically, it, it comes down more to how you actually act upon those feelings. Because... You can, you can think that all you want, but obviously it's like, that doesn't mean you're going to want to necessarily actually kill someone. It's like, yeah, I've thought that about people who have bullied me for sure when I was like in high school and stuff. I very much wanted them dead, but I would never even consider actually acting upon those feelings. Because, for, well, a lot of reasons... One, I was just kind of scared on what that would do to me. But also, it's like I knew that was wrong. <laughs> and it's like, you can have those thoughts without acting on them. And that's perfectly natural. So we see that in action here. 
And we see how Lexi is actually thankful that he chooses to save her. And we're getting to see her character be developed and built upon, which is what I wanted, um, as I've stated in previous reactions. Um, and, and I'm glad that she is alive for that reason. Um, I think we're going to get a lot of great dynamics and developments going on with uh, Jay, Kerr, and Devin going forward. Maybe even Junior as well. So this episode is basically just the aftermath to the last one. After the big fire and everything, we have everybody kind of dealing with it, learning about Oliver's death, and just kind of coming back from all of that. While, again, Devin and Lexi learn ab about everything going on with Chucky. So, there's one thing of note in this that I want to touch on real quick. We saw what looked like Chucky running through the hospital while Chucky was apparently still in the house. Because Lexi and, um, and Jake went back to the house and everything to try and find see if Chucky was still there. And as I said in the reaction, my thoughts were like, oh no, he was in the hospital. We saw him in the hospital. But then he's there. And it's like, wait, how did you get here? And and so, and, and like, we see that figure and everything again and all. It's like, okay, what if it's not like just playing tricks on us with like the timing of this all? Like, okay, it's just like oh, th these little scenes happened earlier or whatnot. What if, or, or after or later rather? What if instead that's not Chucky? What if it's Tiffany? Because Tiffany was mentioned in this way. I was saying Tiffany was mentioned in, in this when uh, Devin was researching everything. But no, I don't think that's possible. Let me, let me look something up real quick here. It's been a while since I've seen most of the Child's Play movies, so I actually have to look something up here. Uh, da, 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 da. Because I, I, I don't think it can actually be Tiffany. Uh, okay. I was correct. It can't be Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany is in the body of Jennifer Tilly, who, you know, the fictionalized version of the actual actress who plays Tiffany. It's weird. But yeah, it, within the context of the movies, uh, at least in Curse of Chucky, I, again, I haven't seen Call to Chucky, so I don't know about that. But she was in she was in Jennifer Tilly's body, so that couldn't have been her running around. Then maybe it was just like they're messing with us time wise and all. And those parts with Chucky running around the hospital were like later on after he had already gotten back to the hospital. Th that has to be it. That's the only thing that really works and makes any sense. But could he have been running around and everything while while he while the cop was like trying to get the snack out of the vending machine and everything because he was there afterwards and the cop brought him into the room i i don't know i just feel like there's a lot of questions there but either way um moving on from that uh we also, in this episode, have the parents having a little bit of a spat with each other. Um, Junior's parents uh, are clearly very stressed and angry, especially his father, um, Jake's uncle. He's very angry, stressed, he's hanging out on the vending machine. They end up seeing um, Lexi and her sister's parents, and they kind of get into a fight, and that, that kind of culminates in jake's uncle punching lexi's father square in the face and it's like very deserved very nice um i i really think that's kind of entertaining <laughs> and the cop lady had to break them up because you know devin's mom she had to break them up because they were going a little hard at each other but let's be honest I, I, I kind of, I, I, not even kind of, I side with uh, Jake's aunt and uncle here, with Junior's parents. 
because Lexi's parents are just pieces of absolute shit. The way they were just blatantly blaming Lexi for all of this after she just simply asked if her sister was okay. It's just like, fuck you. Like, hey, Chucky, you want some victims? There's these two. <laughs> uh, I, 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 just, I, I hate them. I hate them so fucking much. I, I hate parents who do shit like that. Who, who, who bla basically worship one of their children and practically abuse the other. They, they treat this one child as if they're perfect and if they can do, as they can do no wrong, they have all these great things about them, but then they treat the other child like, oh, you're just a jealous piece of shit, and it's like, we don't actually like you. We're we're, not, we're gonna barely pay any attention to you. We're gonna just act like you don't matter. And it's like Jesus fuck. I hate parents like that. And it's like obviously Junior's parents has some ha have some issues as well, but they're nowhere near as bad by any any means. Honestly, outside of Chucky, just you know being Chucky. Um, I think the only character I might hate anywhere near the same level is Devin's mom. And, and Chucky, I at least enjoy him. He's fun. And it's like, yeah, obviously what he's doing is really fucked up and terrible, but he's at least entertaining. Like, Lexi's parents are just pieces of shit, and I hate them. Again, Devin's mother is the only one who might be on that same level for me because it's just like she is just she is actively trying to find a way to pin all of this on Jake. She is actively trying to find any little bit of possibility she can to pin it on him. Because she's an asshole. Because she's a cop, let's be honest. But yeah, it's just that pisses me off too. Because she has no real evidence at all. Her entire thing, like, oh, during the interrogation in this episode, her entire thing about, like, all the, clue, all the clues come back to you and everything, it's like, fuck, no, they don't. You're just making those connections. It's like the only thing you have is that Chucky is spotted around at, at these different events and all. That That's honestly nothing that's it's honestly nothing there, there's no actual relevant like proof be, that that gives you can't you 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 can't cl like claim a suspect based on that little information it's negligible it, it's dumb no no judge worth their salt would convict on that so why are you going to assume guilt based on that that's nothing and it's like again from a viewer perspective yes we know that jake gave lexi chucky for her sister for the purpose of getting back at her we know that but again one that doesn't entirely make jake guilty it's more like an accessory to murder um which is still bad yes but really it's a very freaking weird situation as i said in the pre-thoughts it's like you really can't pin that entirely on him that's that's really fucking weird in the first place um and even, again, from a viewer perspective, he was coerced into that. Into feeling that angry about it. He was angry, but Chucky actively made it worse with his coercion. So it's like, we know even more that she has nothing there. It's just, she is active. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because him and Devin are getting closer. I, I I don't know if she has something against that for whatever reason. But it's like, she is just actively trying to pin this on him. 
actively trying to make him the lead suspect. She is looking for any little bit of evidence she can. And although she's finding practically nothing of any real value, of any real relevance, she's still going to use what she can. It's just like, oh my god. I'm just, I, I'm hoping that this incident with the, the cop being killed and everything helps stop that bullshit. Because it's like, there's no way she can pin this on Jake at this point. There's absolutely zero way. He was with her. She is the alibi in this regard. She literally cannot pin this on Jake. So it's like... And he came straight with her from the police car, too. So it's like there's... And, and the last time... That was the last time she had seen this other cop. So there's literally no way he could have done it. If she still somehow tries to find him at fault or tries to blame him to any real degree, I'm going to be really confused, but also kind of livid. Because it's like, at that point, you're just trying to literally manufacture things against your own witness, against your own proof. The evidence of your own experience. You're, that would mean she would literally be trying to falsify information just to make him guilty. If she continued to blame him at this point. Because there would be absolute... Because all the proof is against her in that regard. The only thing she could possibly do is try to get him to reveal who it really is or something. Like, she thinks that he knows the truth, which she has no evidence of either. And again, yeah, he does. She wouldn't believe him if he said it, but he does know the truth. And it's like, again, though, even if... Even if... She wanted to try to go after him for this. To say, like, again, oh, you clearly know something. You gotta tell me and all. It's like, she has no evidence of that. Again, there, there's no real evidence here. So, fuck her. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's gonna be some interesting fallout from all of this. Gonna be some interesting uh, next steps. I'm definitely... Uh, very excited to see where this goes in the second half because we're already basically with this episode starting our, our, our divergence into what the second half is going to be by having Chucky and Jake kind of separated and going against each other that changes a lot um, so like I said though um, before I get to the next episode I will check out Cult of Chucky, either watching it on my own time or checking out a, like a recap video or synopsis of it, just so I know like what I need to know for that going forward. Um, but again, hopefully, no matter what, the the second half of this season goes really well, just as good as this first half. And I, I hope it kind of steps it up a notch. That's one thing I'm definitely hoping for. I want it to step it up a notch because I feel like that would be a smart thing to do for the second half. The first half was already great and did it well, but if they do step it up a notch for the second half now that Jake and Chucky are separated and all, I think that's going to make this more exciting and more impactful. Um... So that's my uh, thoughts, my hopes, all of that. <laughs> um, but tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this episode of Chucky? And what do you think about uh, where this could possibly head into the second half of the season? Let me know down below and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.